Welcome back to Comic Universe, the only nerd-centric thing you need in your life, DPZ once again rolling solo. And today I'm going to be talking about some uh, news that has been coming out, and well as, as well as give my thoughts on this whole general thing that's going on. Now for those who don't know, uh, a few days ago, I think about a week or so ago, uh, there was an announcement for um, the uh, what was thought to be Dead in the Water Attack on Titan movie that uh, Lionsgate was going to be doing. And apparently that's not the case. Apparently the director from It, the uh, 2017 film, has uh, been announced to be the director of the Attack on Titan live-action film. And a lot of people are really upset about it, but there are others who are like, oh, okay, this could be interesting. But let's be honest, guys, there's, there's enough to be warranted, um, there's a lot to be warranted about this may go, this shit may go sideways no matter, and yes, the director from It, I'm forgetting his name, he, you know, It was a good movie. Um, very well shot in a nice horror film, and in essence, in a weird way, Attack on Titan is a action horror film. So I'm, re and he was also really good with cinematography. So I can only imagine what kind of crazy camera angles he's going to have when the, when the um, scout regiment's going to be like zipping through the forest or through the cities and what have you. So that's going to be really cool. But the main thing is that a lot of anime films, whether they be done by here in America or he or in Japan, a lot of them, especially the live action ones don't exactly transition well. As we know, Toho actually did try to do an Attack on Titan movie, did two Attack on Titan movies, didn't really go well. The Titans looked good, but the story was absolute crap. Um, and yeah, just kind of gave way for Shin Godzilla. Um, so yeah. Now the big thing with this, and I'm gonna, let's talk about the big elephant in the room. With an American um, act director a part of this, does that mean they're going to whitewash um, attack the Attack on Titan cast. Honestly, the only character I don't want whitewashed is Mikasa and Levi. Levi, and a few. There are a few other characters. For those who are fans of the Attack on Titan um, series, most of you guys already know that the Attack on Titan cast in the manga as well as the anime are Caucasian. A lot of them are Caucasian, um, and yeah, a lot of them are. Um, not, in fact, they even state that Mikasa is one of the last uh, people of Orient descent in the world left. Like, she's one of the last. So if anything, if Mikasa, they make Mikasa white, we riot. That's what I'm saying, is that we, if they make Mikasa white... But honestly, you can make Armin white, you can make Aaron white. Um, and I'm not saying, oh, just you know, the whitewashing's fine. I'm not saying that at all. In fact... Um, remember how bad the, um, it was for um, the Death Note movie over at Netflix? Oh, that movie was so shit. Not just because of, you know, obviously they made um, light into a white guy, but also because they clearly didn't get those characters at all. Um, not just, oh, you're saying that because L, L was black. No, I'm not saying that at all. In fact, he was one of the better parts of the movie. The actor who played L was one of the better parts. And honestly, what I would have preferred, and this was apparently, I don't know how true this is, but apparently the original idea for the Netflix Death Note movie was that it was supposed to be a sort of sequel to the original, um, to the original manga and anime. Like, it was supposed to be a live-action sequel and follow-up of what happened after Light, what happened to the world after Light. So, that version of L we got was supposed to be like the new villain, like the new successor to L, much like with Mello and Nier, but this was like another guy who took up that mantle and became his own L. Um, and that other kid wasn't supposed to be light, um, and what happened was they were afraid that no one would get it, that it's supposed to be a sequel, and they did some last minute changes to it. So that was from, but again, that's all from, uh, from what I've heard, I don't know if that's true or not, so yeah. Um, now the big thing, uh, aside from the casting, um, the uh, the casting, which I'm sure is going to be a, a something of debate for a while, I'm fine with it as long as you don't, as long as you cast the right people for the right roles. That's what I've always been about. Um, again, you can, you know, it's okay. With, this is one of the few times in manga, I mean, in an anime, in a live action film, where you can do you know, different races, and, you know, it's fine. Now, it's, it'd be a little more offensive if they did an all-white cast for, like, something like Bleach, or um, if they did, like, Sailor Moon. All, you know, everyone's white in Sailor Moon. Like, there's no, no one of Japanese descent in the film. Or, like, no one's playing those main characters. Kind of like with, um, Dragon... We, we're trying to forget Dragon Ball Evolution, but there's a good template of doing something. Don't do it like that. <laughs> anyway... Um, 
So yeah, but um, Black Lagoon is different. Same with Helsing. If you did a Helsing live-action movie, you could honestly use British actors and get away with it. Like, I've always said, like, I know I'm getting on a bit of a rant, and I'll go back to Attack on Titan in a in a little bit, and maybe somewhere down the road, maybe I'll do a, uh, like, my idea for a live-action Helsing movie in my cast um, at some point on this channel. But um, real quick, I've always wanted to have Carl Urban... Uh, play Alucard in a live-action movie. I think he'd just be perfect for Alec... Uh, Carl Urban would be perfect as Alucard. Anyway, getting back to the film. So aside from the casting... Uh, aside from the casting... Um, uh, this movie, uh, you need to do R. There is no PG-13 about this. There, This movie needs to be an R-rated film. And I think what the having the director of a R-rated horror film is what looks like it may be the case, is that this movie, is, this anime is not for kids. This movie should not be for kids. Um, so I think you should really take it seriously. But just because it's R doesn't mean it's going to be good. I mean, look at the mountains of R movies, R-rated movies that are shit. You know, take this with a lot of understanding of what of the property is. This is a horror. This is a action horror series. The Titans. I really want to be terrified of the Titans when I see this movie on the big screen. I want to be afraid when I see the colossal Titan just bring his hand up and just smash the the wall down, and everyone just it's hell on earth from there on out. Like I want to be afraid of these Titans. I want to feel that kind of fear when Aaron and the cadets go out for the first time and that first guy gets it eaten by the by the leaping titan alive. Yeah. So, that's the big thing. And again, um, I'm, again, I'm forgetting the director's... It's Andy something. I'm, I feel really bad for not looking this up before doing this. Yeah, aren't I professional? <laughs> anyway, so that's the... It, it, obviously, with this director, he's really good at doing cinematography, and I can only imagine... The only person I could have imagined, like, for cooler cinematography, well, um, for a little more, like, as cool cinematography, would have been, like, Sam Raimi, because I can only imagine what kind of angles he could do on an Attack on Titan when they're, um, jumping from building to building, so, um, but he's, e this guy's equally as good, I've seen some, I saw some great angles in the It movie, so I can only hope with that, but again, this movie, I feel like, needs to be R, so, it, um, this cannot be PG-13. There are sh there is shit in here, not just with the Titans, but also some really awful human shit, especially with Mikasa's backstory, that you need to do R. Um, you need to have an R rating to do, to do it justice. And I can ho only hope to God these people at Lionsgate and the director and everyone part of this crew can do this fucking justice. Don't make this like, oh, so Dragon Ball Evolution, you know, maybe we should use that as a template. No, that's a template for everything you should not do in a live-action anime film. Don't do that. Do everything the opposite of that. Just saying, don't fucking do that. Um, anyway, so that's kind of, that's my uh, two cents on that. Now, the other thing is that, obviously, Attack on Titan is still going, not just in anime, but also manga. So it makes me wonder of how far they're going to do the movie, of how far they are going... How much are they going to put in the first movie? How much can you really put in the first movie and make it work? Is it going to be um, just up until Eren turns into a Titan? Or is it going to be an abridged version of the first movie? I have this feeling that they're going to do a rush job and try to make the the first season, the first movie. That's what I feel like they're going to do, is that they're just going to take... Uh, they're just going to do a major rush job of the first season of Attack on Titan and make that the first movie. Which even, like... Honestly, even in the Toho Attack on Titan movies, those movies at least spaced it out a bit. Like, they spaced out the story arcs. So, if anything... Um, the first season should be at least, like, if you want to tell the first season properly, at least do the first three, um, the first three, uh, story, like, first three films should be a story arc. I don't know if you can do the entire series, but I, but it can only, the mind races of how these Titans are going to look. Like, if anything, like, I did like the designs for the Toho versions of the Titans, uh, but I can only imagine, like, are they going to be CGI? Are they going to do, like, the superimposed suits thing like they did with Toho? Probably going to be CGI, going to be honest. I, why am I even asking this question? It's Hollywood. Of course they're going to do CGI. But I can only pray they do, um, 
I can only pray that they do some practical effects. I really hope they do some practical effects with the Titans and uh, what have you. But anyway, um, and that's the thing is that um, I think what really got this Attack on Titan movie going, what really got it going, was the success of G the, of course, the Kai you know, the new wave of kaiju films. Of course, you know, you've had Godzilla, upcoming Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and Kong, you know, Kong Skull Island, and then soon to be Kong versus Godzilla. You've also got, um, you know, the Meg, which I didn't like. I didn't like the Meg, but it did make a lot of money, and it is apparently getting a sequel. Why, I don't know. You've also got Rampage. Um, Rampage also made a ton of money, was also very successful. So this is obviously what really, I think, kick-started... Um, what really put the gears in motion for an Attack on Titan movie um, was the kaiju craze. And what better anime has that than a bunch of giant naked kaiju monsters eating people? <laughs> well, people jump around like Spider-Man. Yeah. That's just like, it just kind of, I think um, Lionsgate went, yeah, we can do that. We can totally do that. So that's the big thing here. So there you go, guys. That's pretty much all I had to say about this. But you guys tell us here at U Comic Universe, what do you guys think of the upcoming Attack on Titan live-action film? Are you guys excited? Are you guys not? Who would you cast for the roles? And um, what do you guys think? And if you're new here, please remember to hit that subscribe button, hit that no bell for notifications, as well as share with your friends and family and whoever follows you on social media. Always appreciate it here. We are still a growing channel, and we could always and uh, every ounce of help is needed. But yeah. Um, as always, um, hope you all enjoyed this, vi this video and just tell us what you think in the comments below and see you and I'll, and we'll see you here uh, once again in the universe.